Today I'm sharing a tale of a furniture refinisher. I am bringing you along to visit with one of my amazing friends, Velma. Her beautiful flip furniture, her crafts, and techniques that she uses. Come learn how a thrift flipper is turning her hobby and passions into something positive and how her amazing work helps her community. Welcome to my channel, Freckled Mom DIY. I'm Devin. If you're new, welcome. And if you're returning, hey, come on along and meet my friend Velma and hear her tales of a furniture refinisher. So here we are, we are in Velma's garage. If you don't know Velma, this is my friend Velma. I'm so excited, I love her. So Velma is actually a subscriber. That's how we first, first met. And she came to my booth at the Rainham Flea Market and we met and we fell in love and we have so much in common guys and that's why I'm here because Velma <laughs> is so talented. I have to show you guys what she does. Plus I'm gonna ask her all about it. So let's jump right in. In the garage. We are in the shop. Okay. This piece I just finished. It was a curbside piece. It was original, I would say, a piano bench. And I just refinished it. And you can use it as a bench. It'd be a great side table with a storage cabinet. Very sturdy with my fat butt on it. Very sturdy. And I just um, obviously stripped it, washed it, cleaned it, did all of that. Painted it and then did decoupage paper over it. Tons of coats of um, Gator Hide Dixie Belle product. Super good hard coat. Oh, wow. And it should be, it should, then I had a little wax over it just to, just cause I do extra. And they're a little extra like I'm, me. I'm one of those little <laughs> extra kind of girls. It's okay, we like those kind of people. This is an old dry sink that oh. is so out of date and ugly. But no, it's beautiful just as it, it is. It's going to be. <laughs> I took the top off, I broke the top, but that's okay, I intended to when I was taking the, if you know what a dry sink is, and I'm sure you do, they have that sort of thing here, and then it goes around the back, and then it comes around the, the side, and this is open. And you know, it had a big old heart cut out of the wood. It was truly outdated. So I said, I'm taking it apart, and I did take it apart, so. What do you think if, do you have like a year in mind of how old this is? Uh, this is actually a handmade piece, wow. but I have no markings on it. But you can tell it's a handmade oh, piece yeah. just by looking at the... And I start every project upside down. Right. I look at a piece and I go, hmm, good bones. But let's turn it over just in case. Right, right. So every single thing I work on has been on its head. And I start from the bottom up. Really thick and... It's heavy and it's, uh, it's very Did you do this paper or was that already there? I did, yeah. Oh, okay. I, did I was going to say, oh my God. I don't know if anybody knows a white cottage company on YouTube, Mary Yoda. See shop and I pick up some things from her, but I love the newspaper peel and stick paper. I put it on lots of drawers. This is one of my favorite pieces. This is the 1800s piece. You've seen it advertised. So oh. that's something I wanted to ask you about. So you sell these. Yes, I do. Okay. So if somebody wanted, if they're local, cause these are huge pieces, obviously you're yeah. not going to ship them cause no. that'd be ridiculous. No, but people can drive here and they could meet you and they could pick it up. Yep. And this is 1800s. You can tell not a stamp, a handwritten thing on the back. But there's also the lock. The locks were 1800. I stripped it completely down. This was as poor a shape as I could ever get in a bureau. But I saw, I know this is going to sound very strange. My furniture speaks to me. Why would you think I think that's strange? I, I could, this could <laughs> sit here for weeks I just love before it. I said I know what it needs. From now, where did you find this? This, there were three bureaus that were given to me, donated to me, and I'll tell you why about donations in a minute. These were in a friend of mine's neighbor's attic for 41 years. Oh my God. These people came to, to the United States in the 70s. They, they're from the Azores, so they, oh, okay. you don't put furniture in, there's no right. basements. Right, Technically, right. it's just water there. You don't put furniture in your basements, they don't have them. So they came here, they had too much furniture, they put it upstairs in the attic. Yeah. So my friend John said to me, I've got a friend that is going to throw away some bureaus. You want to come and look at them? And oh my God. The you heard him singing from outside. Oh, you were like, if, if yeah. I had a high-pitched voice, <laughs> I'd go, ah, like the angels, you know, hallelujah. I wasn't sure what I was going to do with them. They were in pretty tough shape. 
but I let them talk to me. The three of them sat in here, and I said, "Just, just, you'll tell me what you want." I completely. So wait, wait, hold on, hold on. I don't want to interrupt, but I'm going to. (laughs) So it's okay for us DIYers and furniture flippers to leave furniture in our garage or any storage area for a long amount of time and leave it there and wait for it to tell us yes. what it wants. It will sing to you. Okay, yes, everybody got that. Everybody got that. It honestly did. And I and I have two of them out here and the other one's in my bedroom, but my husband. Oh, so that was the other one? That's one actually, oh, the, no. this green one, that's a green, like, sort of a Hampton olive green. This blue one, I'm changing the light blue to wood now how it. do you do that is it like a stripper or um, do you just scrape it I've already stripped it down to wood and then I gave it a painting and I did the light blue with the, with the navy blue I like it but it's not the right blue I'm gonna take it down to wood I sanded it to wood initially yeah so it's only one um, one layer here so it's going to be wood like the black one is. I'm going to do navy and wood, but it's going to have a little gold trim somewhere on it. A little something, something, you know Yes. I mean? A little extra. So the drawers are out right now. I kind of leave things out so I know that I'm going to work on that project. Right. okay. Otherwise, I'll say, oh, it's covered. I'll forget about it. That's a good idea. That's a tip, too, is put everything on rollers. Yeah. I have to have it on rollers. Yeah. So I'm getting old. I'll be 75 soon. <gasps> that looks like my uh, my I hero. I was just going to oh. tell you oh. that. I wanted you to see Hold this. Hold on, I'm calling my husband. I'm taking this home. This is Hampton Olive Dixie Bell Color and Dried Sage. It was yellow when I got it. It was disgusting. Five coats of paint. White, black, yellow, pink, and blue. Oh, my God. It was a... a piece to work on from heaven. Are the um, wheels staying on it? They're antique vintage wheels, original oh, wheels. Oh, my God. Yeah. So I'll make, let you get a better picture so you can tell Mike this is what you want. When I saw your um, green the, one, I'm like, the oh, church, I have oh to tell gosh. Devin she has to see this. I didn't even touch that. I didn't sand it down. I didn't do oh, anything to it. I just loved it. It's beautiful, I isn't it? it? I, I, love I love the color. I love everything about it. I'm yeah. just leaving it. Yeah. And it's got little dings on it. and everything. It's like literally Character. the exact same thing. Character. But this is very early 1900s. Waterfall started to come in around 1920, 30 in that range. Oh, see, I was thinking like the 40s. No, it started in about the 20s to 30s. You start to see pieces coming in. Generally, you saw tall boys come in with the sides. This is an old table that was on the side of the road, a a pub-sized table. So there's no shame in picking up furniture on the side of the road. For years, I was afraid to do that. What were you afraid that the owner was going to come out? Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you Picking doing? Picking the garbage like I was some kind of, I don't know what. <laughs> I don't want anything to go on the trash right. or the dump or the right. landfill or the burn pile, whatever anybody wants to call it. Almost everything is salvageable. If I can't fix that whole thing, I will rip that sucker apart and use pieces anywhere I can. Nothing goes to waste. Nothing goes to waste. I save everything because you know I'm going to use it. Right. Now, you have um, a partner who helps you with some woodwork and stuff, too, because I see some stuff in this garage for storage ideas. Thank God for my partner. His name is Tom Pals. Um, He is married to a girlfriend I went to school with, and um, she generously lets me have him um, once a week. And I needed storage because everything you see that's in these cubbies was out here on the floor taking a valuable real estate. And I couldn't move in here. I just couldn't find anything. I, it would take me twice as long to get a job accomplished because I was rummaging for things. Well, these and, aren't like little tiny shelves. No, these are like, and you don't buy them at Ikea. Yeah, you can't, you can't no. buy these kind of things at no. um, stores. Um, I do smalls. I do signs. I do, obviously, my... Thing is big pieces of furniture. Obviously, yes. Yeah. Home decor and yard decor. Yeah. Bird houses, lamp posts, mail posts, anything made of wood. He can do anything. He makes about nine or ten different styles of bird houses. And I did the old uh, IOD transfer stamp, then I painted it, then I stamped over it again. If you have a big yard, you got a place for this puppy, you're going to want it. Oh, yeah, that is It's beautiful. a burned condo. You can see the hole in the middle there? Yeah. That's the middle condo, and each end has another condo. Wow. But this, I don't know the colors yet, but this is going to be colorful. I like them to be colorful. I got a mid-century modern bureau over here. It's on its 
tilted. I did it in navy blue. It's huge. Yeah, it's nine drawers. The drawers have, they're curved, as you can see. Oh, okay. So they all stick out on a curve like this. Oh, it's that's so cool. It's mid-century modern. And the legs are really different on this. Um, normally, let's face it, every bureau has a leg in every corner, right? Right. No, you don't have this balance properly. It's, it, you're gonna think it's gonna tilt. That is just one of the features oh. of the manufacturer of that time. So they aren't exactly across, they should be, I mean, but this works fine. It, it's yeah. not wobbly, there's nothing, yeah. it's the way it was built. So I painted that navy um, in the navy Dixie Bell, and then I sanded it down and stained it with um, deco road, I think. And I created that wood grain by doing painting with, I know you're gonna think I'm weird. I don't think uh, you're weird. <laughs> I use three different brushes. I've seen it done, something similar on a YouTube once. You know, I like to paint it light, very, very light background color. Then I take my scrub brush and I, it's hard, but it's nylon bristles, but they're very compact and very hard. It's not like a soft brush. And then I run that across it and that creates different lines. Then I run an antiquing wax wash mixture, put that over it and just before it gets really set, Another brush comes out and that's like one of those little dust pan brushes. I use that and then I put the glaze on which is an antiquing or aging glaze and it's brown and it's a Rust-Oleum product, really good product. Put that on and immediately take one of those, any one of those brushes, doesn't matter, grab one and it creates another line, another, it shows more wood, keeping your wood, staying wood but you want to do something to it, I don't want to cover it. So you just use washes, and that way the wood grain still comes out. That's beautiful. Yeah, it's, it really, when it's set up, it's a beautiful piece. I mean, nine drawers, what do you, what can you hold in that? Lots of crafts. It would be that, or uh, oh, yeah. like a buffet piece. Yeah. The silverware and all the gadgets that you use that for that. That would be perfect. That'd be a great piece. And that would match my dining room. It would be a great piece in the dining room. You get friend <laughs> discount. <laughs> And this Red Beast, it's been in my house. I've owned it since 19, oh goodness, probably in the 80s. It's huge. A friend of mine came in and said, oh, I love that. And because you said, I, let me paint it for you. No, I didn't you're really like the, offer to do that. You're yeah. like the Leonardo DiCaprio of uh, <laughs> Velma's Garage. Let me paint you. Oh, let me fix this for you. Let me paint this for I you. I have an antique um, armoire in my kitchen that I transposed and fixed it up and put some shelving in and made it a pantry. I have an eight foot walk-in pantry too, but I don't know if I'm just too lazy to take two more steps or I just like the antiques. I want them in my house. Maybe it's a little bit of everything. I think so. So she saw my pantry in my kitchen, the, the armoire, and she said, I want one of those, but I need like this. And I said, well, all right, I'll sell that to you. I, you yeah, know, eh, sorry, I'll just get another one. It's sorry. only furniture. Yeah. I mean, I can go find more. This is sitting here waiting for me to get to it. I've got to have a day where it's warm enough for me to spray. I want to spray it because it's a big piece. When I post it on my Facebook page, she calls me or texts me and says, put it away, I'm buying it. Nothing ever seems to leave my house It isn't in her <laughs> car. But that's not necessarily true, but she does buy almost everything. Her style is quite similar to mine. She likes the farmhouse, rustic farmhouse, a little bit modern farmhouse. I'm leaning her towards industrial farmhouse because she needs to update a little bit. Oh, so you're like an interior decorator too. So I, I am an interior yeah. designer as okay. well. I'm right. Uh, Sheffield School of Design, but it's an online thing. But I did it in the back in the eighties. Whoa! Oh, I didn't know that. Well, oh my goodness! Lots of little things I suppose I don't tell people. But. <laughs> Um, but anyway, I mean, is that real natural pink hair, Velma? I mean, yeah, what are I'm you keeping? Natural, no, I'm a natural <laughs> redhead, much like you, but as you age, red fades to pink. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. Was this once this a vanity? This is an antique. You're going to die when you see this piece. I love this piece, but it needs a lot of work. Dun, 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 dun. Tell me what it looks like. Oh my goodness. It's a, it's a card table. It's a card table, but the legs swing out. Peace. Oh, I love it. You love it? I love it. This piece was originally, you're gonna die, $500. Oh. Then it went down to 250. 
And I ain't spending that kind of money on something right? I might paint. Right. Then I went to 150 and then I bought it for 50 There you go. It's just one of those pieces that all in one little small table. It's talking to me. There you go. Talk about nautical. Now, uh, what color is... Um... It's Yankee Blue. It's uh, Dixie Belle Yankee Blue. So, very eclectic um, kind of garage, isn't it? It's full of stuff that's strange. I mean, this is kind of a, my storage corner here, like stuff. This is going to have decoupage or transfers or something on it once I clean it up. This is extremely heavy. Oh, what's that? It's like that heavy right there. Oh my God. That used to be on my wall. I have a shiplap wall in the bedroom and in the kitchen, which we'll go to. And I used to have a big old magnolia leaf. But this is a gun cabinet. I was uh, Someone said, free, come and get it. So I did. It's got the racks in there for the gun handles and the stocks, the barrels and the stocks. Now, will you keep the duck on it? Oh, you cut the duck yeah, off? Yeah, no. I, I'm going to keep the duck on it. I don't know why. I'm, I used to hunt. My family are hunters. So I like the duck. I just think he's cute. And I'm going to, I'm going to use it. I don't have quilts, but I'm going to stage it with quilt. There's a new day that will come again to... That was yellow. It was ugly. I just used a glaze here for a little stencil on the yeah. side. I think it's a pretty little table oh, now. beautiful. I made that um, shelf and I refinished those two um, bookcases because I had to change the layout here for him uh, he developed sensory overload so there was too too many books because they're colors but i didn't put too many books back out he neutralized this room right. for him i had to make it safe for him so and neutralize it they're just tv tray tables you buy them on you know go to wayfair or any of those stores they're a hundred dollars plain i'm a hundred dollars and i did all that work yeah any thrift store will have yeah. you sitting around in the furniture side absolutely or... this piece 20 bucks it was oh. falling apart you know me flip it over right. start at the bottom every single thing was broken every piece of um trim the drawer pulls the drawer glides there was nothing that wasn't broken the drawers were broken i had to repair them i finally get everything sanded painted it's ready i got i just put the handles on it i'm putting the door back on i get it on and it cracks right there and right there i'm like but oh you, my God. you can feel that can't you yeah i'm good i know exactly what to do yeah. but it was like yeah that's the last right thing. right so and then i just did you know obviously sanded and, and stained the top keep that now green one keep it in your head keep it in your head come on in that's original the way it is. It came out of a lady's house and I went to a flea market. I picked it up at a, at a flea market. It has the vintage rollers on it. And so then adorable. there's my ship lap wall, which I'm taking things down for Christmas and stuff. Now, you, did you do this? I did not do this. Oh, I have okay. a very tall friend who did it for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I keep up my perfectly imperfect sign because that's me. I'm totally yeah. perfectly imperfect. And this was made out of old parts. Oh, this is an old ladder, bond boards. And a door. That's all made oh out of um, old scrap. And then I liked it so much. We have another one right over here. To wash away the pain. It was stages of coffee bar kind of. I do um, tons of rolling pins. And then I, we make cutting boards too. That's another thing that Tom and I will be doing is our cutting boards. That's one I made. It's an antique anyway. It's a cr cranberry scoop. Made that, made that. Made the yarn trees. I yeah. do the smalls too, you know? This was an old turntable. Oh yeah, I love those. And I just made a little so Christmassy cool. thing out oh, of it. Yeah, it's so cute. Don't you love it? Made that ladder, made the sign. <gasps> oh That's my God. the craft area. Wow. That is supplies, supplies. What a room. Stuff I've done. My craft table, which was thrifted for ten dollars, and I refinished it. Flowers and it's everywhere. It's just oh my God. everywhere. I love it. And all my smalls, I tend to do up here. That back table is where I make signs. When I make small things, I just bring them up here and get them out of the way and just pile them up. And I could stay up here for months. Yeah, I I don't months. have to buy another thing for ten years. So how long have you been crafting? 
I first started crafting probably since I was a kid. Yeah. I mean, I just have always been that kind of yeah. kid. Furniture, I started when I was 16. Um, I needed a bureau, and my, we had a big 18-room house. We had 10 people in the family, uh, eight kids. My parents didn't have a whole lot of money yeah. to buy furniture. I mean, I had a bureau, but it was little. So I said, well, I have to go thrift a bureau. So I thrifted a bureau, and I fixed it for myself. And then 19, I get married. You know, you, 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 you're 19 years right. old. You don't have a house full of furniture. Right. you got to go thrift it. So I grew up in Canton. A couple of towns over was this kind of the deluxe berry kind over that way. Yeah. It was called Dover. A very uh, kind of wealthy area. At least, I don't know if it is now, but it was then. So I found a thrift shop over there, figuring they'd have good stuff which they did. And that's how I furnished my house. Other than basics, like I always buy couches and I always buy mattresses. But for the most part, if it's wood, I bought it. Yeah. It's an antique. And I don't own anything that's like brand new, brand new. Um, everything else I own is pretty much thrifted, thrifted, flipped, curbside, upcycle it somehow. That's the way it should be. It is. And I, you know, anytime somebody says they're going to throw it away, I go, no, you're not. I'm going to take it. That's how I get the donations for Stony Brook. Where do you work? Uh, I am the president of the board at Stony Brook, which is an independent senior, independent living senior housing facility. We have 99 units and love the people. And I do a lot of work over there. I'm a, we're a very active board. During the pandemic, we were running a food program for them. Um, obviously, everything was closed down. They couldn't right. do anything. There was no interaction. Everybody was isolated. The least we could do, obviously, is give them food. Uh, the firefighters, the town of Sharon, all very good. We're in Sharon, so they were bringing food over to us uh, mm -hmm. every other week. So we had a great food program going, and it made me realize that I can't give them money. I can't donate money to them, but I have a skill that can produce money that can buy them programs and food, Chromebooks or anything. There's a way to get what you need. And also by networking, which we're very good at. And my director of innovative programs, Stephanie, is the best at networking. So that's how it started where I was making donations to Stony Brook. And it was for food programs and resident uh, programs, things to keep them busy during pandemic. We got donations of Chromebooks and we got donations for programming that, you know, software, Microsoft. I mean, these people are wonderful to us when they know what we're doing to keep them going and, and keep them their mind going. Obviously, you need good, fresh food. That's the most important was the food. They didn't want to go to Shaw's and, and wear a mask and go to Shaw's and get COVID. They didn't do that. So we brought the food to them and we delivered it to their apartment. And now we have a much better system for doing it. That was all grocery bags and luggage. We've got a much better system going for them now. We still deliver food. We work with two organizations that deliver meals on holidays for us. Um, it's called Served Kitchens out of Stoughton and Love Lasagna. These people donate me furniture, donate yeah. furniture to me because they know that I'm going to sell it. Then I give the proceeds to them. But I have a skill that will generate some cash. And I think in, you know, in crafters worlds and DIYer worlds, people don't realize they can use their hobbies for good, yeah. whether it be, you know, making an income for their family or raising money for, a, you know, a certain thing. It's just something like amazing that you can take something that is so unloved and oh. so ugly and so nasty and you turn it into something beautiful right. and give it new give life. It, exactly, and that's what I say, give it a new life. Serve Kitchen, they came over here, they were holding a fundraiser. It was going to be in December, but COVID started coming back up. And they're scheduled for later, I think sometime this month. And it's an annual fundraiser. And I told them, come on over, I've got, you know, you can take a pick. They were having an auction. We left here with seven things. And I'm like, go for it. Take what you oh, want. Oh, that's awesome. Because it's only going to help them, which in turn helps our residents get a free meal at Thanksgiving and Christmas. They're generous to us. Why wouldn't we be generous back and have the ability to do it? And I don't care what they take. She took a few small things. She took a nice big table. She took a tilt top table that I did. Go for it. I hope you can make a ton of money because it's all for a good cause. It's all about networking. You know, you one hand leads the other, so to speak. There's something um, special in that, keeping it in like local businesses, small yeah. businesses, and not these huge corporations, which yeah. huge corporations can help somewhat, 
But I feel like when it's something like what you're doing, I think it just, it means so much more when it's all in the community and everybody has like a feeling like they help. It's just more of a community, you know, bonding. It's a small world and everybody can help everybody if everybody's willing to do it. But if you can help yeah. somebody just a little bit, it means it the gets. world. It does. Yeah. You have no idea how excited people get. At the smallest things, you think it's not even going to count. They're probably going to notice it. or But every single thing, every little thing that you do is noticed by these people and the elderly. And they're the forgotten, to me, forgotten generation in this country, unfortunately. Yeah. But over time, these people became important to me. I got to know them. And some of them are still there from when I joined this 21 years ago. So it's wonderful to see them every week when I go in. And, and I love them. They're just wonderful people, and if we can help them, I would say do everything I can do for them, you know. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. I want to thank my friend Velma from the bottom of my heart for doing this video with me. She is such an amazing friend and such a good person. I have linked all the charities she spoke about today down in my description. If you are able to donate, please do so. If you are looking to utilize the services, please look into these resources. Velma also takes donations and sells her pieces. If you are local and would like to look at what's for sale, contact Velma through the link below. I am so blessed to have amazing friends like her. I am also so grateful to know such an amazing woman who has lived a beautiful, happy life helping others. I have more local businesses and artists to share with you in the coming months. As always, if you enjoy crafting videos, DIY, gifts and decor, thrift flipping, and more, go ahead and subscribe to my channel, Freckled Mom DIY. And don't forget to hit the bell so you'll be notified every time I post a new video. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook as Freckled Mom, and I'd love to connect with you over there too. Again, I want to thank my friend Velma for taking the time to show me her garage and beautiful home. We would have never met if I hadn't gone out of my comfort zone and started a YouTube channel. And if Velma didn't go out of her way to meet a stranger. Life is short. Live in the moment. Be a good human and do what brings you joy. There are so many good people in this world and especially now during these unprecedented times that we need to rally together to bring peace and joy. Thank you for being here and watching. Please share this video with your friends and your family. You might just spark some good work in your community. Keep crafting and I'll see you soon. Have a great night.